Hi, hello and welcome back to Program Analysis. We're still in this lecture on slicing and this is video number three on this topic where we will have a brief look at a technique called thin slicing, which is also a static approach to compute a slice, but that aims at a smaller slice than the static slicing that we've seen before, um, so that the slice is easier to understand for a human. So this idea of thin slicing starts from the observation that static slicing techniques such as the one that we've seen in the previous video often result in relatively large static slices. In the worst case, a static slice can actually contain the entire program. And in many cases, if you apply slicing to uh, complex real programs, um, these slices are too large for typical debugging or program understanding tasks. So the key idea of thin slicing to get a smaller slice that is easier to consume for a human is that instead of aiming at an executable program, um, the thin slicing approach tries to reduce the program in a way that is good for a human, but not necessarily leads to an executable program. And the idea to do this is to heuristically focus on those statements that are most commonly needed for, for example, debugging and to then let the user who looks at the slice um, um, in increase the set of statements that are included on demand. So the user can ex essentially expand the slice when needed, but starts from a very, very small subset of the program and only adds those statements where um, it's needed in order to really understand what the program is doing. So here's a definition of how this thin slicing approach um, computes a slice. So it relies on this idea of directly using um, a memory location. So we're saying that a statement is directly using a particular memory location if it uses that memory location for some computation that is not a point that you reference. So for example, if we have um, an expression like this, where we look up the field f of x and then add this to um, some other um, variable y, then x is only used here for a point that you reference, which means this statement or this expression is not directly using x, but it is directly using y because this is really used um, for the computation itself. And now based on this idea of direct uses, um, thin slicing computes a dependency graph um, similar to the previous approach that we've seen in the previous lecture, but now it only con contains um, uh, data dependencies, so no control flow dependencies, and it also does not look at all data flow dependencies, but actually only those that correspond to a direct use as defined above. And then given this uh, dependency graph, the rest of the approach is more or less the same um, as for the original uh, Mark Weiser approach that we've seen. So the thin slice eventually is computed as all the statements that are reachable from the criterion statement in this graph. So basically same idea as before, just that the graph is um, less uh, dense than what we have seen in uh, the classical static slicing approach. As an example of these ideas, let's have a look at this um, very small program here where we are creating a new object and store a reference to it in variable x. Then we also um, store this reference in this other variable z, create another variable which we store in y and then create um, another pointer to um, our object x called w. Then in line five, we are writing something into um, the field f of w and then have this conditional where we check whether uh, w and z um, are the same. And if they are, then down here, we are um, writing um, z.f into our variable v. And now let's assume that this last statement is actually our slicing criterion. And in order to compute the slice, the first thing we will need to do is to compute the dependency graph. So to write down this dependency graph, we start by just writing down the nodes, which correspond to all the seven statements that we have here. And um, I've of course, thought before how to align those nodes so that the graph um, looks nice at the end, um, which happens to be like this. And now the next step is to introduce um, the edges into that graph. Um, as we've seen before on the definition of the graph used for thin slicing, um, all 
um, dependencies that really matter here are the direct data dependencies. I'll also um, note down the other data dependencies, those that are actually ignored here, and also the control flow dependencies, so just that you see what is not included in this dependency graph. So let's start with the direct data dependencies, so those that really matter for thin slicing. So here we have um, one that starts at line, uh, sorry, at statement one, where we are writing into X and goes to statement two because X is used here. We have another one from this definition of X to statement four because X is also used here. Then we have one um, for this definition of Z here which is used down here to compute the conditional at statement six. So this corresponds to that edge. Then we have one from statement four where we are writing into um, W and to six because W is used also in this conditional. Next, we have one for this definition of Y, which is used down here at statement five to determine what to write into the field F of W. And then finally, there's one that is a bit more tricky, which goes from five to seven. So at five, we are writing into this field F and we are using this field F here as the value to put into variable Y. So this is why we have this data dependency, but now if you look carefully, the base object is actually different, or at least it's a different variable. But because we have this check here that W and Z correspond to the same object, we know that this actually is the same field F, and therefore we add this um, edge from 5 to 7. Now, in addition to these direct data dependencies that are used for thin slicing, there are also some other data dependencies that are not used. I just put those here so that you see what is not used. So there are some that are just a data dependency, but it's a data dependency that is used only for um, a pointer dereference. And as by the definition of the graph used for thin slicing, those are um, ignored. So there's one um, for this pointer that is created here, which points to the object um, that is also pointed to by X, and that is then used here as the base object for this um, field lookup. So we have this data dependency from four to five, and this would be included in um, the full um, program dependency graph, of course, but is excluded in the graph that is used for thin slicing. And then we have a similar case here where um, Z also gets a pointer to this um, object, which is then used down here. And again, this is a data flow dependency, but it's one that is only used for dereferencing um, this object and therefore not included in the graph. And then the full program dependency graph um, that we have seen in the previous video would also include control flow dependencies. And in this example, we have one of them. But this is also ignored in the graph that is used for thin slicing. And this is um, from statement six to statement seven because statement six obviously determines whether statement seven is actually executed. So given this dependency graph, we can now compute the slice. And just to show the advantage of thin slicing, let's at first have a look at what the traditional slicing approach by Mark Weiser that we have looked at um, in the previous lecture um, would actually do here. So if we compute this traditional static slice um, starting from the criterion at statement seven, we would basically look at node seven and then check which other nodes can reach this node. And if you do this and basically go um, backwards um, um, in all these edges, what you see is then that um, 
all the statements are included in this traditional slice, which um, arguably is not very useful, of course, for this very small program, it's probably okay, but for a larger program, um, this very often includes way more statements than you want to have. So now in contrast, what does thin slicing do instead? Well, it will only um, include those nodes that can reach node 7 using the um, direct data dependency edges. And that basically means um, that it will only include nodes 3, 5 and 7. So the thin slice for this program will consist of this node or statement and this statement and that statement. And that gives you some idea of why this variable v gets the value that it gets um, without really including um, all the other nodes that um, are included in the traditional slice. Now, if these three statements are not enough for the developer to really understand whatever the developer wants to understand, then uh, thin slicing allows to demand the slice, um, uh, sorry, to expand the slice on demand. So for example, um, if the developer wants to do this, let's say for um, the question why um, W and Z are actually alias, because if you just look at the yellow statements, this is a question that um, you would probably ask. Then what the developer would um, possibly do here is to mark this one statement here as um, some as the criterion and then starting from this criterion would include more statements into the slice. So this um, is statement six if you look at the um, graph and then follow all the direct data dependency edges backward um, then you would um, also include this and also this and also this which would then explain why w and z are actually aliased. Now in this small example, um, this then happens to include all statements and you could say, well, it's just as bad as traditional slicing. But in practice, um, there are examples where um, for larger programs, this is still a much smaller slice and it's also done um, only on demand. So only when the developer really wants to expand the slice. So now it may happen that the thin slice that is computed this way is not enough for the developer to actually understand um, what the developer wants to understand, for example, when um, debugging a particular problem. And the reason is that these thin slices only include what you could call producer statements, but they do not really um, ex um, uh, uh, contain what you might call explainer statements. So producer statements are basically those that tell you why a particular value has been computed. Whereas explainer statements um, also tell you why things happen. So for example, it, um, those statements may tell you why two accesses to the heap read and write the same object because they, um, e even though they may have um, different um, variable names, or they may explain you why a particular producer statement can execute first of all. So what other statements has, has made this statement execute. Um, the assumption of thin slicing is that most of these explainer statements are not useful for most tasks, so you should not include them um, at the very beginning, but instead um, the developer can um, expose these explainer statements on demand by incrementally expanding the thin slice based on what the developer really wants to see. As an example of this expansion, um, let's consider one question that a developer might ask when seeing just the three yellow statements. And this is the question um, of why these two variables w and z are actually alias. Because if you just look at the three yellow statements, um, this may not be um, very clear to you. And now what um, this incremental expansion of the slice allows you to do is to um, select some statement in the program as another criterion where you want to start expanding the slice from. And this natural 
naturally here would be this one where um, um, w, w and Z happen to be shown to be um, aliases. And um, now doing this um, means that we look at our dependency graph again and now go um, uh, backward from this statement six following the direct data dependency edges backwards. And this would mean that we also include um, four and also um, two into our slice. And because two is included, we would also include one. So by doing this expansion, we would then end up with the uh, full set of seven statements here, which then also explain um, why W and Z are actually aliases. Now you might argue that, well, we're back where we started from because now the whole program is included um, in this expanded thin slice. And for this small program, this is of course correct. But um, in general, for more complex programs, the thin slice, even if you expand um, a few uh, times, will still be smaller than the traditional static slice that you get from the um, more traditional approach that we've seen in the previous video. So now to evaluate whether this idea of thin slicing can actually help developers find bugs quicker than the traditional static slicing that we've seen earlier, the authors of this thin slicing paper did an experiment where they essentially simulated the effort a developer spends in order to find bug using the traditional or the thin slicing approach. To do this, what they did was to take a set of known bugs um, that all crashed the program and where you also know the root cause of this crash and this root cause um, may be at a different location than, the, than where the program crashes. And finding this location of the root cause is the task that the developer is um, um, supposed to do. And now they assume that given a program or the slice of a program, the developer starts from the crash point because this is what you typically know when the program is crashing and then does a breadth first search through those um, nodes of the uh, program that are in the, in the slice um, um, on the program dependency graph. And then what they did in this experiment is to count how many statements that the developer would inspect um, when he or she uses the full traditional static slice or the thin slice only. And the results that they get is that um, if you just use the um, thin slice, then on average, um, you have to inspect 12 statements before you reach the one that is actually responsible for the crash. Um, and this is 3.3 uh, times less than what you get if um, you would use the full uh, traditional static slice because there are just more statements included in the slice. And as a result, the developer would likely look at some statements um, that are actually not needed before reaching the one that is really the root cause of those bugs. All right, and this is already the end of um, this video number three, where we have looked at a variant of the static slicing approach that we've seen earlier, which is not uh, focused on getting an executable program, but on having a small uh, subset of the program that is useful for a developer when trying to understand, for example, the root cause of a bug or trying to understand the behavior of a program more generally. In the remaining fourth video of this lecture, we will look not at another static slicing approach, but at a dynamic slicing approach where the program is executed and where during the execution, um, some statements are relevant for um, the value of a variable at a particular location. And the question is how to compute these relevant statements. Thank you very much for listening and see you next time.